All Krakow itineraries you can find on the internet focus for some reason on Auschwitz camp, which is in Oświęcim, the salt mine, which is in Wieliczka, and on Zakopane, which is a town 100 km from Krakow. Is there really nothing more Krakow can offer? Of course not. Cześć, cześć, I'm Marcin, let's discover Poland in the Polish way. Krakow is the second biggest city in Poland, a student city, tourist hotspot and one of Poland's cultural centers. It was capital for so many years. Do you want to explore, eat something delicious or just relax and have fun? Krakow is for you. Probably the most famous Pole of past and present century said about Krakow. Krakow, from my youngest years, even from childhood, was for me a special synthesis of everything Polish and Christian. It always spoke to me about the great past of my homeland. Let me take you on a journey around Krakow districts that you must visit. Today, Krakow covered this area, but everything started here, on Wawel Hill next to the Wisła River. What's more, according to a legend, Wawel is one of the world's main centers of spiritual energy. It is said that one of the buildings on Wawel Hill hides Chakram, one of spiritual stones spread across the world by the god Shiva. People say it's just a legend, but when you are at Wawel you have to admit you can sense something magical there. And maybe that's why castle on the Wawel Hill was the residence of many Polish kings. Kraków actually served as the country's capital for many years. Since there are not enough records from the early days of the city, it is difficult to estimate when the city was founded. It is dated that most likely in the 9th century the hill was already built up. Although some sources report that the oldest human traces in this area date back to tens of thousands of years ago. What we can visit today is a complex of building that has evolved over the years to the present day, has been expanded and rebuilt. We'll not discuss the architecture of entire complex here, but if you want to know more about how it has changed, let me know in the comments. Or visit Krakow. Probably the Wawel Castle was also an inspiration for the Czerzyny Castle, built in 1970, located 6 kilometers away. Mają rozmach, skurwi, syny. Yes, we have such buildings in Krakow. It serves as a regular, ordinary residential building. You can enter Wawel Hill for free. You have a beautiful view of the river and the city. Entry to the buildings is paid, and inside you can find royal chambers, undergrounds, museum exhibitions, and tons of information on how life used to be in Krakow. Additionally, there are also great of distinguished Poles, such as Kazimierz III Wielki, Jan III Sobieski or Tadeusz Kościuszko. Being buried at Wawel is a great honor for the person. And there was a dragon. A dragon lived under the hill, who, like any dragon, destroyed villages and devoured maidens. Fortunately, he no longer lives and devours, and you probably expect that as in such fairy tales, a prince on a white horse came, defeated the beast and in return received the prince's hand and the half of the kingdom. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Not this time. There was a knight and even countless knights who tried, but each of them perished. Actually, a main character of this legend is a cobbler named Dratewka, a small, scrawny, ordinary resident whom you wouldn't bet a cent on at 100 to 1 odds. But Dratewka figured that if strength couldn't defeat the dragon, cleverness would. He took a ship, stuffed it with sulfur, and placed it near the dragon's cave. When the dragon ate a ship, he became so thirsty that he ran to the Wisła river and started drinking and drinking, and drinking, until he drank so much that he burst. Dratewka thus defeated the dragon, received the prince's hand and half of the kingdom, and we learned that cleverness always wins over strength. And evil. You will find the dragon statue in the front of his cave, at the foot of Wawel, and the remains of his bones can still be found on the hill. They are here, but I won't tell you exactly where. You can find them yourself. By the way, conspiracy theorists say there were no dragons, and in fact these are whale, rhino and mammoth bones. What? But they are conspiracy theorists you can't trust. The legend, of course, tells the truth. Especially since recently dragons have started to multiply, and you can find more and more of them around Krakow. To visit Krakow and not go to Wawel is like being in Paris and not seeing Eiffel Tower, or Colosseum while in Rome, or like being in Vegas and not waking up with regret. Boys? Stanach? Nie. No właśnie, ja. 
Znam kogoś, kto był i opowiedział mi to Jowo. And there is also a Polish sweet band called Wawel. You should try Mieszanka Krakowska. The city began to develop and expand. The parts of the city added to the growing city are now called Stare Miasto. The old town was surrounded by defensive walls, but I will tell you about that later. In the central point of the old town we find the market square. Fake news says it is the largest medieval market square. And it tempts me to repeat this myth again, but I have to be honest with you. Well, it's not the biggest medieval market, not the biggest market in Poland, and not even the biggest market in medieval Poland. However, it is still pretty big. It's the heart of the old town and you definitely find some interesting things here. Like Sukienice, a big market building which derives its names from the Polish word sukno, which means cloth. Initially, as you might guess, the building served as a place where cloth was sold. Today you can mostly buy souvenirs here, some of them made locally, some of them at Polish seaside. Poland is one of the biggest producers of amber and amber jewelry, so if you want to bring some unique original souvenirs from Poland, amber is a good pick. And of course you will find products imported from faraway lands. In the marketplace you can also meet Lyconic, it's not a mix of cosplay and hobby horsing. In fact, the Lyconic eventually become one of Krakow's symbols. According to a legend, Tatar troops secretly approached the city, deciding to camp by the Wisła River near the city's border to launch an attack at dawn. City residents discovered them there and prevented an attack on the city, saving it from looting. They then donned the Tatar's costumes and rode into the city on captured horses, initially causing fear, but soon bringing joy to the inhabitants. The mayor of Krakow declared that to commemorate this event and to thank the defenders of the city, the Lyconic will ride into the city each year on Corpus Christi Day. Lyconic is also name of cafe chain, which is okay. It's also the name of tram model where you can find the Lyconic symbol on the chairs. Additionally, it's the name of snack brand that produces paluszki, a popular stack here. Next to Sukienice you will find Town Hall, or rather what remains of it after it was demolished in the 19th century. The first mention of Town Hall building are probably from the 13th century, and the tower, it in current form, was probably built in the 15th century. You can also go under the Sukienice and the Market Square. There you will find a great museum that allows you to learn the history of Kraków. Don't hesitate for a moment, it is very, very, very worth visiting. It's hard not to notice this gentleman. He is one of the greatest Polish poets and there is a good chance that he invented freestyle battles or at least he was the first Polish freestyler. In the early 19th century, during the Christmas feast, another famous Polish poet, Juliusz Słowacki, threw some barbs at Adam, which provoked him so much that he stood up and began to respond to the accusations with rhymes. And Adam knew how to rhyme. A few years earlier, he had written an epic poem titled Pan Tadeusz. And listen because this is quite interesting case. Pan Tadeusz is a multi-threaded book with a love story, intrigue and plot twist. Now you're probably wondering what's so special about it. Well, the entire thing is written in the rhymed 13 syllable verse, from description of places to dialogues. The entire content is a poem. The length is also impressive, over 200 pages. Okay, this might have gotten a bit too lofty, so let's lighten up. We also have Poles who haven't mastered using the Polish language even at the preschool level. <laughs> you can't miss the Kościół Mariacki, the tallest and one of the most important churches in Kraków, which you should definitely visit. If you are not convinced by the fact that it's the tallest church, inside you will find a unique gold altar. But if you still think the church is not spectacular enough, today I have two legends related to it for you. Probably you noticed these two towers. You might wonder why they are different and why one is taller and the other shorter, and why there is no information anywhere about who built them. Dlaczego? Kurwa! Dlaczego? According to the legend, back in the day, the city officials hired two brothers to build the towers. Each responsible for building their tower, and each wanted to build the tallest tower as quickly as possible. The elder brother finished first, but when he saw how quickly the younger brother's construction was progressing, he feared that the younger might build up a taller tower. So he bought a knife at Sukienice and ended his brother's life. However, when he realized what he had done, guilt tormented him. He confessed to the crime and took his own life at the top of the tower. The knife used to commit the crime hangs in the Sukienica as a warning. I won't tell you where, you can find it yourself. And according to a legend, the name of the builders were erased from the city's documents. 
Legends. And there is another legend associated with the church. Once the melody known as the Hey Now was played daily from the higher tower to signal the opening and closing of the city gates. The trumpeter also sounded the alarm when he saw a fire or an approaching enemy. Once upon a time, when the Tatars who frequently attacked southern Poland reached Kraków, the guard began to play the Hey Now. The city gates were closed in time, but a Tatar arrow pierced the Polish trumpeter's throat before he could finish the melody. In memory of this event, the melody is now played every hour and always breaks off in the same moment. By the way, if you wonder what time it is, you will also find a sundial on the church. Although, as the Polish saying goes, szczęśliwi czasu nie liczą, which can be translated as happy people don't count the hours. And in Kraków, you definitely won't count them. Most likely, while in Kraków, you will walk along Floriańska Street. The name comes from Saint Florian, one of the city's patrons, whose image you will find here on his gate. Wait a minute! Florian is a patron of firefighters. In Kraków, many buildings were wooden or had wooden elements for many years. During fires, people prayed to Florian for help in quickly extinguishing the flames. For example, one of the main streets in Kraków, a gate and a church are named after him, indicating that he must have been very helpful to the residents at that time. Floriansk and Grodzka are the main streets of the old town. The whole path is also named as Droga Królewska. Unfortunately, in recent years, it's like Oxford Street in London full of people and overpriced products. But despite everything, if you are in Kraków, you must walk it. And God, that's probably a topic for a video dedicated to a tourist traps, but I have to say it here. Recently, they opened these shops with a mix of sugar and unnecessary ingredients, for some reason named as sweets, where the cost of one kilogram of the product is over 120 Polish zloty, which is the equivalent of over six kilos of pierogi in a milk bar. It's super overpriced and not even good. Avoid this place. For good Polish traditional sweets, go to any ciastkarnia or cukiernia. Okay, I got a little frustrated. Why don't we spend a few moments with the Polish pony just to lower the pressure a bit. In Kraków you will find over 100 churches. Regardless of whether religion is important to you or what faith you follow, they can be an interesting point of exploration considering that most of those in the city center were built a few hundred years ago. Some are bigger, some smaller, some more austere, other richly decorated, but they are definitely worth visiting. Actually, while working around the old town you can plan a road from church to church. You will visit several of them and at the same time discover a big part of the city. Fun facts with Marcin! While working around Kraków you can find these halls. In times when torches were used to light the way, they served as a place to extinguish and put away the torches. End of the fun fact! Since we are still in the old town area, I have another legend for you. If you are bored with Kraków's legend, skip to the next chapter. This one is longer but will explain why we have so many pigeons in Kraków and what it means if pigeons follow you. Please make yourself comfortable, take compound in hand and let's get started. First of all, we must establish one very important thing. These are not pigeons. They are enchanted knights. But first, a brief introduction and a real story. We once had a king of Poland named Bolesław Krzywowski, who decided, and I'm massively simplifying this story, that it would be unfair if only one of his sons took the throne after. Therefore, he divided Poland into several districts, each with its ruler. It worked the same for subsequent generations, with ruler of thrones passing on successively smaller portions of each district to several of their sons. As the Polish saying goes, Gdzie kucharek sześć, tam nie ma co jeść. The period from disintegration to reunification is nearly 200 years. And as the legend goes, somewhere during this mess, one of the princes decided it was high time to unite Poland into one powerful kingdom. To do this, he planned to go to the Pope to get his blessing, and with the support of the church, it should go smoothly. After this long introduction, you are probably asking yourself, but what does this have to do with pigeons? I'm hurrying to explain. At that time, a journey to Rome, which is over one and a half thousand kilometers from Kraków, was a serious expedition that required a lot of money, or gold actually. The prince had no idea where to get the money, so he turned to a witch for help. She agreed to help him, but in exchange, he had to ban his knights. The prince agreed. The witch started casting spells and turned the knights into pigeons, who began to pack bricks from the surrounding buildings. The 
falling bricks turned into the gold coins, which the prince collected for his journey to the Pope. And by the way, Polish currency name is Złoty, which literally means gold or golden. The witch promised that when the prince returned from Pope and united the country, he would get his soldiers back. As you can guess, the prince never returned. He didn't manage to get to Rome. He probably didn't even leave Polish lands. He squandered all the money in taverns along the way and realizing he had wasted everything, he disappeared and never returned to Krakow. The knights in the form of pigeons are still waiting for their ruler. So if pigeons are following you and looking at you strangely, it could be a sign they sense royal blood and see you as their must. By the way, Ovarzanek was invented for pigeons. That's a story for another episode, however, they should not be fed with it. It's not healthy for them, as well as bread or any bakery products in general. But they are great for you. You definitely should go to Polish bakery and taste our breads and drożdżówki. And it's better not to touch the pigeons. They carry disease and are rather dirty animals. Ah, and Poland was finally united by Władysław Łokietek. I said that marketplace is maybe not the biggest, but still pretty big. However, I guess it was not big enough because next to it you can find Mały Rynek. It literally means small marketplace. The old town is surrounded by planting a park that was created in the 19th century in a place of demolished defensive walls a few years earlier. Besides greenery, paths and benches, you can find monuments of people important and distinguished for Kraków and or Poland. But not all the walls were demolished. We can still get a glimpse of what the defensive walls of Kraków might have looked like thanks to Barbakan and Floriańska Gate. Unfortunately, the other gates that make up Kraków's defensive walls can only be seen in drawings. On the other side of the river, years ago, here we had a river, now it's one of the main roads in the center, was the city Kazimierz. Yes, the current district was a separate city. For some reason, the whole district is sometimes called the Jewish district. Well, Jews did indeed live in this part of the city. And in the early 20th century, they expanded their presence to other parts of Kazimierz. But, you know, no one calls Chicago a Polish city just because a lot of Poles live there. And the Christian churches you can find here, like Kościół Bożego Ciała, Kościół Bonifratrów, are actually quite spectacular. Okay, but what is Kazimierz? The name Kazimierz actually comes from a great Polish king, Kazimierz III Wielki. You can find him on 50 złoty bill or in Civilization 5. He was also the son of Władysław Łokietek, whom you met at the end of the last letter. Kazimierz is one of the most important kings in history of Poland, with many successes in diplomacy, law making and country development. There is a saying, zastał Polskę drewnianą, zostawił murowaną. He also built the Szlak Orlich Gniazd, which was a chain of castles built in the south of today's Polish territory. It's a great idea for a trip outside Kraków, but you need a car and a few days to see all castles. Moving back to this, Kazimierz received city rights at the beginning of the 13th century, with the market square, today called Plac Wolnica, being the central point. With the city's growth, a full-fledged fortification was also built. Unfortunately, the walls did not survive to our times. Kazimierz developed very quickly, becoming the second most important city after Kraków. Today you will find here many cafes, restaurants, museums, etc. It's definitely a good place for sightseeing and eat something delicious. Remember when I talked about Wawel? I mentioned that you can see what life in Kraków was like there, which isn't entirely true. There you can see what royal life looked like. Here in Kazimierz at Ethnographic Museum you can get a better understanding of the life of ordinary people. And in my opinion it's a super underrated place. Just as great is the Museum of Engineering and Technology located in an old tram depot and it keeps its vibe. In the Kazimierz district you can also find Okrąglak where you can eat the most popular Polish fast food. Zapiekanka. And super tasty Kraków street food is Maczanka Krakowska, which you can also eat here. Oh, and there is a street named Kupa, which comes from the Hebrew word that I believe can be translated as treasury. But the word Kupa in Polish means poop. Between Kraków and Kazimierz, there was another small settlement called Strado. The name probably comes from the Latin strata, which can be translated as paved road. And that was the function of stratum, being a connector between Kazimierz and Kraków. The video convention requires me to throw in some cool trivia. Hmm. Oj, trudne, trudne się wylosowało. There is a monument dedicated to a dog named Jock, who waited for his master for a year 
in the place where his master passed away. You will also find here beautiful churches like Kościół Bernardynów or Kościół Świętego Pawła. Moving to the south and now actually crossing the Wisła River, we have two districts, Podgórze and Zabłocie. For not locals, the districts are probably best known for being home to the Schindler's Factory Museum. The name might remind you of the film Schindler's List. And yes, the story is about this Schindler and this place. Okay, but this area has much more to offer. Right behind Schindler's Factory is the Museum of Contemporary Art, which according to Google is not even half as popular as the factory. But trust me, it is really worth visiting. And I'm not an artist. Person. In the Podgórze Market Square you will find what I think is the most beautiful church in Kraków. Some say it is in the style of Disney castles. If you are wondering where the locals go to restaurants, this is the district for you. I don't know if there is even one restaurant here that is not at least good. Walking along the boulevards you will have a beautiful view of Kazimierz, the old town and Wawel. And if you want to sit with a beautiful view of Kraków, go to Krikoteka or Hotel Forum. And Hotel Forum is quite an interesting case. It was built over 10 years from 1978 to 1988 and was closed in 2002. From that time until 2013, it functioned as a huge advertising stand. Since 2013, the lower part of the hotel has been open, where you will find a cafe, bar and restaurants. It's quite a pleasant place with decent prices, a nice view and atmospheric interior decor. And you may ask why they closed it after 14 years of running. There were various rumors. Some said the building was in danger of collapsing. Others said the building's basement was leaking and was too prone to flooding. Rumors also said that the size of the rooms did not meet the hotel standards, like the ceiling was too low or something like that. In Poland we say that jeśli nie wiesz o co chodzi, to chodzi o pieniądze. In the end the place is safe and open to guests. In Poland we have several mineral springs. And it's not just pure water from underground source. In the mineral springs you will find typical stone juice with lots of minerals and health benefits. The most popular is probably the one in Krynica Zdru. However, you don't need to go to Krynica. In Kraków, on the border of Podgórze, there is the Antoni Mateczny Mineral Spring. Antoni Mateczny is the man who at the end of the 19th century drilled into these healing springs. To learn more about Antoni and this place, you should visit the Mineral Springs. Actually, there is one more place in this district worth visiting, but I will talk about it a bit later. Wagiewniki. This district is largely a residential area with relatively new buildings. However, I started the video with a quote from John Paul II. So it's impossible not to mention the sanctuary and museum dedicated to his pontificate, which is located in this district. Plus, it's quite a popular religious cult place associated with this image. Nowa Huta is the most underrated district in Kraków and it deserves a separate video. So if you want to learn more about a city built entirely from scratch after WW2 on the most fertile lands in the region and why I might not be lying when I say it's a unique district on a European scale and actually what's wrong with me that I recommend you a visit district everyone avoided for years and was said that if you don't have a machete better not venture here, subscribe. Did we cover all districts? Definitely no. If you are curious about what else Kraków has to offer, let me know in the comment. I feel like I haven't even touched half of the interesting places in Kraków and so much time has already passed. But besides the districts, I must also tell you about a few more interesting places in this video. Around the world you can find tall conical structures serving as a places of worship, burial or entertainment. I'm talking about structures like Pyramids of Giza, the Ziggurat of Ur, the Pyramid of Sun or Luxor in Las Vegas. In Poland we have Kopce. Okay, this doesn't look as spectacular and certainly shouldn't be the main reason to visit Kraków, but let's give me a chance. The oldest are Kopiec Kraka and Kopiec Wand. Their purpose and date of construction remain a mystery, but they certainly existed before the formation of the Polish state in the 10th century. Various stories suggest that they could have been a pagan worship sites, tombs associated with the presence of Celtic, Scandinavian or even Scythian or Hanik people. But of course, legend always hold the truth. 
So according to them, Kopiec Kraka was built as a tomb for the great king Krak. A splendid ruler, founder of Kraków was such a magnificent ruler that after his death his subjects decided that his grave should be placed in a special spot on a hill with a view of the city. The origin of Kopiec Wandy is explained by the legend o Wandzie co nie chciała Niemca. Wanda was a great queen, probably the daughter of Krak. She loved Kraków above all else. She was famous for her wise and just rule and she wanted to dedicate her entire life to the city and its residents. The legend says she was also stunningly beautiful beautiful and rumors of her beauty spread throughout the world, reaching a German prince who tried to steal the queen's heart unsuccessfully. The prince issued an ultimatum. Either Wanda marries him or he will have to kill her. Wanda declared that her heart belonged only to Krak and made an outstanding book, committing suicide by jumping into Wisła River. And Kopiec was built where her body was found. When I mentioned Graves on Wawel, I talked about Tadeusz Kościuszko. To discuss his merits for the independence of both Poland and the USA, a separate episode is needed. But to give a taste of how significant he was, many monuments were built in his honor, including in Kraków, Łódź, Chicago and Detroit. His name was given to a bridge, cities, a county, an island, national park and a peak. And several mounds were built in his honor, the largest being the one in Kraków built in the first half of the 19th century. And at its base you will find a museum dedicated to Tadeusz Kościuszko. The last one is Kopiec Józefa Piłsudskiego. And after praising Tadeusz Kościuszko a moment ago, it might be hard to top that, especially since Piłsudski was primarily associated with Poland and didn't gain such fame abroad. But for Poland he was an incredibly important person. He fought for Polish independence and took part in rebuilding Poland after regaining independence. He also deserves a completely separate episode. As for you, Kopce could be an excellent stop on your trip. You can climb to the top of them to enjoy spectacular views of the city. You may ask, Marcin, is that all? Well, actually, I think it's not even the beginning. And this is, and this is, this is just a tribute. Subscribe for more.